What's good YouTube, it's Justice I used to be Pay, and today I'm back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how this generation has proved the old generation wrong. But before I get into that, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe, do all those things. It helps me out a ton, and we are on the road to 50K, so make sure you are subbing up. One thing that's been consistent when it comes to rap and hip hop culture is the generational divide between old and new. There's just always beef there. They never really get along the two generations that are clashing, never get along, right? The older guys who are on their way out and the newer guys that are on their way in never get along. That's just always how it's been, whether it's old rappers beefing with new rappers or new fans beefing with old fans or old fans beefing with new rappers or old rappers beefing with new fans. Like, it's just always been like that. The young and the old tend to clash when it comes to rap and hip hop culture. And even beyond that, when it comes to like, a power shift, a transfer of power in rap, it's always very drastic. It's very rarely like a smooth shift, like, okay, you know, our time is up, it's your guys' time now. Very rarely is it a nice shift in power. It's usually the younger guys coming in and just kind of snatching everything from the older guys. And, you know, sometimes there are moments where there's like passing of the torch moments, but oftentimes those moments have to happen after the young guy has already kind of came in and become the number one guy. Oftentimes there's passing of the torch moments once the newer generation has become undeniable at this point once you can't you know just ignore them and be like nah that's not real hip-hop nah they're not really as good as we were once it becomes undeniable then we often get those passing of the torch moments it's very rarely before the guy has become the number one guy but in general with rap there's always that beef between old and new and there's always pretty much the same criticisms floating around when it comes to these old generation fans and these new generation fans and old generation rappers and new generation rappers. When it comes to the newer or the younger fans or younger rappers, it's always, ah, these dudes are old, they're hating on us, they're not in anymore, they, they're, out of, they're out of touch, they're just hating on the new guys because they don't want to lose their spot. And then with the older fans and the older rappers, it's always, you know, typically the same things again. These new guys aren't that good. They're perverting the art form. They don't really understand what they're doing. They don't understand the history of it. And overall, they're just not that good. But I will say, for this generation, this generation, this newer generation has proven the older generation wrong. And in general, you would think, okay, that's a really good thing. Like, what does that mean? But in this case, it's not necessarily a positive. A major criticism that old heads have of this like newer generation is that they all kind of sound alike. You know, other critiques are, you know, the validity of their talent, the validity in their new ways of making music, the validity in these new aesthetics that they bring, the validity in their street credibility, and the validity in their lifestyle according to their raps. More specifically, emphasis on the last two street credibility and the lifestyle according to their raps. A criticism that a lot of old heads would bring up is, oh, these new kids are soft and they not really as real as they used to be and rappers ain't as real and they was really out there when they rapped about something they did it and things of that nature. These are things that they would constantly say and I think a large part of this is due to the fact that rap has kind of changed in terms of how it sounds. There's a lot more singing and harmonizing in this modern rap space over the last like eight years now and in general rapping or at least in rap culture singing typically just equals soft. Like if you hear somebody sing, that just means they're soft, they're, they're not like that. So I think that played a part in it. And then also the way a lot of these rappers look nowadays in comparison to older rappers, you know, they're wearing super tight pants or at least they used to, you know, now we're in the baggy era, but you know, they were wearing super tight pants. They had the colorful dreads, pink, red hair, green hair. They were painting their fingernails. Like all of this stuff kind of added into the old heads being like, these dudes are soft as hell. Ice T, a hip hop legend, said in an interview, these kids got softer and soft is not something I'm able to give audiences. And maybe up until very recently, this was a narrative that was around from like older rappers and rap media personalities. It's still a talking point that you'll hear from old heads at your local barber shop in a rant riddled with attacks at gay people with, you know, some words that are probably, uh, let's just say like cancel worthy, especially when it comes to guys like Young Thug and Drake. But this generation has kind of started to flip that narrative on its head. This generation of rappers over the last like eight to 10 years is probably the most volatile generation of rappers that's ever existed. And I want this to be perfectly clear. I'm not painting this as a good thing. This is a bad thing. I want that to be made perfectly clear. This is not a good thing, okay? I'm not here making this video being like, yeah, we have the most killers and people dying. Like, no, that's, that's not what I'm doing here. But even in this generation, 
Of course, there's a bunch of people who are frauds and phonies, people who, you know, exaggerate their lifestyle or exaggerate how they grew up in efforts to sound tougher and to sell more records so people believe their street credibility. Even that happens in this generation today. It still happens all the time. But even when you look at the group of people who are like phonies or looked at as phonies or not really like that, there are still dudes in here who are willing to crash out. We got somebody like... 6 9 Now, I know everyone hears that name and laughs. Ah, 6 9 wanted to be a gangster. He got a Rico case, then he snitched. He did all that. Like, yes. But even if you look at 6 9 who's even at the time before everything happened, people were questioning him like, ah, I don't really know if this dude's really, you know. He was out here putting hits on people. He got a hit put out on, on Chief Keef and got Chief Keef shot at. He got Trippy Red punched. He got a couple other people jumped. There was like a shooting around the Barclay Center. Like, 6 9 was moving crazy out here. For somebody who wasn't really like that, he was moving insane and got tied up into a Rico case. Now, of course, he's, you know, snitched or whatever, and the whole thing played out how it played out. But 6 9 was somebody who wasn't like that. It wasn't looked at like that, but was still out here doing all types of stuff. Even is still doing stuff today, apparently, in like the Dominican Republic, getting people like jumped or something like that. With this generation of rappers, you could search through IG lives of rappers with like 15,000 followers on Instagram and 100 people in a live stream, and they're walking around trying to start problems. They're walking in their ops hood looking for people talking about they won't smoke, come outside, doing all types of just insane stuff on live. Now, a lot of the times it is for a clout. It is a clout move. It is because they know people want to see chaos and stuff like that, but oftentimes stuff really happens on this live. Even if you look at somebody like K-Flock. K-Flock was one of the biggest, you know, rising stars out of New York over the last couple years. But if you look at some of the stuff he was doing before, eventually, you know, the, the murder arrest that happened. But if you look at some of the stuff that happened before even he really blew up to become who he became, he was one of those dudes on IG Live in his ops hood looking for people, riding around the car, talking about how he can't wait to catch a body. Like, this dude was on IG Live doing this stuff. At potentially any moment in this generation, you can find a rapper with 8,000 followers on Instagram on IG Live hunting someone down like a bounty hunter. The amount of rapper deaths that have happened in this generation are absolutely insane. And for now, I'm just going to list off people that were victims of murder. I'm not going to list off anything else. We've got XXX Tentacion, King Von, FBG Duck, FBG Cash, Jada Youngin, Take Off, Pop Smoke, Young Dolph, PNB Rock. Nipsey Hussle, Mo3, and Draco the Ruler. This is just as of recent. This is this recent generation. Over the last like couple of years, I could have reached back to 2014 and started there and went up to now. I could even put some, you know, less notable names on the list like a Gunu, but I just want to stick to like really prominent rappers over the last couple of years. That's a lot of names to just throw out there. Just easily, just off the top of my head, oh yeah, we got so and so. Like that's a lot. So you kind of get the memo. And then on the other side of things, we have, you know, rappers who are currently in jail right now, like an NBA young boy, Young Thug, Pooh Shiesty, YNW Melly, Tay K, Casanova, Fetty Wap, K Flock, Glock 9, YFN Lucci. And again, I could mention some smaller, less notable rappers. I could even reach back to pull somebody like a Rondo number no. nine who, I mean, it's a decade ago, but like, that's not that long ago. He would still be in this modern generation of rappers. But again, you get the point. YNW Melly has been in jail and is on trial for the murder of his two best friends for like the past five years now. And this incident that happened, which I mean, I guess we don't know if he's, you know, uh, guilty or innocent. This happened at the very peak of his career before he, you know, got locked up. He peaked again after he got locked up. But still, you get what I'm saying. Pooh Shiesty shot a security guard at the peak of his career, at the height of his career. Kate Flock is in jail for possibly committing a murder in broad daylight in designer shoes, in designer clothes, at the peak of his career. According to this Rico case, Young Thug has been running around like a mob boss. He's been running a, a crime syndicate for the last decade. Uh, for his entire career, basically, getting people shot, getting YFN Lucci's mom, mom's house shot out, like just a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Tay K at the peak of his career, or he actually got to the peak of his career, let me say, for being on the run. He got to the peak of his career because he was on the run and he made the music video, The Race, and he took a picture with his own uh, wanted sign. And then he actually ended up committing a murder while on the run. At the peak of his career, Fetty Wap's career fell off so bad that he actually started to move bricks and start selling drugs like he was talking about in his songs. This drill scene in Chicago is kind of what kicked off this crazy run 
of this generation where dissing the dead started to become way more popular and people were running with popcorn in their hands to the YouTube page Warren Chirac to see who the newest pack was and how they were disrespecting him. And this drill culture really spread all across the United States, not even just over the United States, but all the way overseas as well to the UK. And this is how we get songs like the Naughty Bop song, where they're making a song mimicking how a 14-year-old boy died. Now, obviously, he was you know a drill rapper as well, so it's not like he was just completely out of the streets, but they're mimicking how a 14-year-old boy died, and they're making a dance to it. Or we get songs like Who I Smoke, which is a flip of a classic pop song in A Thousand Miles, and they flip it to where they're dissing dead people in the hook of the song. These dudes have the street credibility, but not only do they have that type of credibility, they're living their raps even after they've already made it. It's to the point where it's like, we have to see you do something now. It's like, that's the, the standard now. It's not just be from the streets and maybe have some ties. No, people have to see you do something crazy now. They got to see the arrests. They got to see the, the videos of you fighting. They got to see the shootings. They got to read the little, uh, you know, Reddit pages talking about what murders you're possibly connected to. They need to see the evidence of this stuff in front of their face. Otherwise, they're like, eh, I don't know. Like, is this dude really like that? Like... In general, the rule for rappers, at least up until this point, up until recently, was like, okay, you're a street dude, you're coming up, you're doing all these crazy things, and then you make it as a rapper, and you kind of chill out a little bit. You don't have to completely lose your ties or whatever, but like, you chill out, and if you want something done, you don't do it yourself, you know, you kind of keep it hush-hush, but you don't live that lifestyle every single day. That's completely flipped. It's like, some people are becoming rappers, and then starting to do the crazy like like a like a six nine now they're doing the crazy stuff it's it's really insane outside of young thug it's like these dudes still want to be on the front lines when it comes to these crazy crimes and this crazy stuff that they're doing young thug was seen as the face of this new generation by the old heads he was feminine you know he wore nail polish and dresses and he was the main guy that was getting a lot of the brunt of like the old head attack when it comes to like oh these are the street rappers now these dudes oh my gosh the Pac would never oh my i can't believe y'all listening to these dudes nowadays you know that type of stuff that type of rhetoric and again you know a lot of those uh homophobic slurs that i'm not gonna put into this video but uh yeah you get the point but if you listen to what's being alleged about young thug in this rico case and let's just say hypothetically for this video's sake all of that stuff is true he's probably one of the most dangerous like mob criminal boss heads of the last like 10 15 years he's getting people shot at he's getting drugs moved he's getting people killed he's getting all types of stuff are happening because he's saying he's getting weapons moved in and out YFN Lucci's mom's house is getting shot up. There's a wiretap. Now, all that stuff, I don't know if he did that. You know, that's just what they're alleging. But all that stuff is what's being written about Young Thug right now. That's what they're fighting about in this case. And there's even a wiretap. Now, this is something that actually happened. So the, wire, the other stuff is just alleged. There's a wiretap of Young Thug. I think he's talking in reference to YFN Lucci. And he says, y'all ain't beat him up or shot at him yet? Oh, y'all boys then got soft. One of the craziest examples of these guys living their raps or just being an antithesis of what old heads said about this generation is King Von. King Von might have actually legitimately been a serial killer. The fact that this man had a high profile career in rap and fans while he was at the peak of his career were connecting him to murders is insane. Obviously the murders were from before, but the fans connected him to 10 possible murders where he either did it, assisted in it, or paid for it. Now he was really allegedly involved in five to seven of them when it comes to hands-on, but Vaughn was rapping about it in his lyrics, talk about bodies four plus three, three plus two, whatever he said in his music. Never in the history of rap has someone like Vaughn existed. Of course, you know, he was still dissing his dead ops and rapping like other Chicago rappers when it comes to dissing people, but he was the one that probably actually did it in a lot of cases, allegedly, at least, let me say, allegedly, I don't know, I can't, you know, we weren't there, but now most of the stuff that people are alleging Vaughn did happened before he rapped, right? All the stuff that they're for some reason tying him to, I don't really know why, but all the stuff that for some reason fans are tying him to when it comes to these murders happened before he became a really big and famous rapper. But even after 
He was still doing stuff. There was the situation where possibly, potentially, allegedly, for some reason, King Von and Dirk were in Atlanta and King Von is hanging outside of a window shooting at people. And then there's the situation where the feds were pretty much going to try and pin the FBG duck murder on King Von. They were going to say he put a hit out on hit out on him for like $100,000 or something like that. But even if you look outside of the scope of like, oh, the feds said that King Von was the one that did this hit or whatever. If you actually look at the timeline of things, it's really remarkable. Um, I noticed this on stream about a year ago. Uh, FBG Doug died August 4th, 2020. He got shot in that like mall shopping area of Chicago. And then a video comes out August 14th, 2020. And it's King Von and he's at Icebox. Icebox is a famous jewelry store in Atlanta. He's at Icebox and he's getting like 10 customized pendants, ice, uh, iced out O block chains for his friends back in Chicago. He's getting all these chains. He's getting their names on them, all types of nicknames and stuff on the back of these chains. That video comes out August 14th. FBG Duck died August 4th. And on August 14th, a video comes out of King Von at Icebox getting iced out personalized pendants for all his friends. Who knows when the video was recorded? Maybe it was recorded a week before, two weeks before. Maybe it was recorded that day. But you get the point of the time on that type of stuff. Whether he did all these things or not, Vaughn was still somebody that really liked when people had that thought of him as a street dude and as a killer and being scared of him. Like, that's what he really enjoyed. Of course, he enjoyed being a rapper, but like, you can tell that he really liked that side of things as well. And on the front lines of living your raps and that kind of criticism, it even goes further than just like, oh, street stuff, you know, gangs, killing, shooting, all that stuff. It goes further to drugs as well. These rappers are on drugs. <laughs> they, like, I, I know it's kind of funny for me to say it like that, but they really are, like, badly. Like, a lot of these rappers are, uh, they're addicts, okay? They're functioning barely. They're functioning addicts. Lean in pills is a very, very common diet for the average rapper nowadays. Older rappers in their raps, for the most part, were the dealers. This new generation are the dealers and the users at the exact same time. Um, and, you know, we've actually ended up losing a lot of rappers due to overdose and this drug use that's really, really grown over the last, like, 10, 15, 20 years now, but really kicking into full gear over the last, like, five, really. Of course, we've lost somebody like Juice World who consistently rapped about his drug intake in his music. And then we've also lost guys like Mac Miller. We've lost somebody like Big Scar, Lil Peep, and guys of that kind of same ordeal of music who would rap oftentimes about the stuff that they were taking. A lot of rappers have a lean or pill addiction and they talk about it all the time. And you know, they've been arrested for having these drugs and let's just say they weren't selling it. NBA Youngboy just got arrested like two days ago for, a, or not two days ago, two weeks ago for a bunch of drug charges while he was already on house arrest. And I guess he was pretending to be a doctor and having fake prescriptions filled out using dead people's information. I don't know. It's a crazy story. But even before he got arrested for the drugs, he was constantly posting himself with pills in his mouth and pills all over the floor and in his house and just wild stuff. This is the reality era of rap. Everyone has a phone, everyone has cameras, everyone has social media, and everyone wants to see everything. So it's not enough for these rappers to just have them, you know, rap gangster in a song and you hear it and maybe believe it. They need you to see their gangster, okay? They need for you to see one of their ops die and mysteriously in some sort of shooting that they've been beefing with for years, and then they get on a song and diss him and talk about, dang, he died, he should have did this, ah, that's crazy. Like, they need you to hear that. They need you to see them record a music video at their ops gravesite. It's not enough for you to just hear the story about, oh, man, these two dudes were beefing for years and then one of them ended up dead. No, they need you to see that... This is me right here. They need to incriminate themselves for your entertainment. Even when it comes to the drug stuff, it's not enough for them to just rap about being on drugs or something. No, no, no. They need you to see them on Instagram Live with all their pills in, in their hands or something like that. Or they need you to see what's in their cup. Even someone like Drake, who has been the poster boy for soft rappers since 2009, let him tell it. Now he's a mob boss. Apparently he's a mob boss in some of his music and even some of the fans start to believe it. Some fans think that he paid for the hit on XXXTentacion, which I think is ridiculous. I don't think Drake had anything to do with it, but that's a real theory out there. People really believe that. And even outside of that, we hear stories about people going to Toronto and some strange interactions with 
you know, local gangs there that Drake might be tied to, or even the stuff with Jay Prince and mob ties that Drake is tied to. Like, even somebody like Drake nowadays is apparently, like, he's apparently a mob boss. It's gotten to the point where old rappers and old rat fans are looking at this new generation like, these dudes are crazy. They're insane. They will crash out for anything. These dudes will crash out on you for 50K TikTok views. They will lose everything that they have in front of you for a viral moment. Somebody like Fat Joe recently, I think it was on a podcast or something like that, he came out and said, look, 50% of, or not 50, he said 95% of my raps were all lies. Now, I think he was trying to be funny and, you know, he was being sarcastic because they were talking about all these rappers getting Ricos, but this is real. Like, even the old rappers are looking at these dudes like, what is wrong with y'all? Like, do y'all just not care about the legal consequences? Like, just looking at all these rappers and the situations that they're in and just being shocked, really. Because, of course, rappers have always done crimes. They've always gone to jail. That's nothing new. But in an era where it's getting harder and harder to get away with crimes, it's like they're doing more crimes for some reason. This generation has shown that, yeah, you know, there are soft rappers and rappers who aren't really like that and rappers who are phonies and lie and pretend like they're like that and do all that stuff. But there's a large percentage of rappers who are willing to crash out, whether it's drug-wise or street-wise, quite literally for anything. But I think that's going to wrap up my video. I think you get the point here. This generation has definitely proven the older generation wrong because, man, the life or lifestyle has become more and more volatile as the years go on somehow. As technology gets better and people are getting caught more often for crimes, it's like they're like, yeah, let, let's keep doing it. Let's get the fans to see. Me as a rap fan, I'm just going to end this video. Me as a rap fan... The amount of dead rappers I've seen is crazy. Just myself personally, the amount of, not like seeing their dead body, but you get what I'm saying. The amount of times a rapper has died, it's insane. But that's the end of my video. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree with what I'm saying here. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I'd greatly appreciate it. But have a good day. Be safe. Be blessed. Peace.